Sorry to interrupt you. Good morning. I've uh, just met with Donald Tusk following the EU Council's discussion on the UK's request for the approval of the Strasbourg supplementary documents and for a short extension to the Article 50 process. Firstly, I welcome the Council's approval of the legally binding assurances in relation to the Northern Ireland backstop, which I negotiated with President Juncker last week. This should give extra assurance to Parliament that in the unlikely event the backstop is ever used, it will only be temporary and that the UK and the EU will begin work immediately to replace the backstop with alternative arrangements by the end of December 2020. After a lengthy discussion, the Council today also agreed, subject to a successful vote next week, that in order to provide time for the UK Parliament to agree and ratify a Brexit deal, the date of our departure will now be extended to the 22nd of May. If Parliament does not agree a deal next week, the EU Council will extend Article 50 until the 12th of April. At this point, we would either leave with no deal or put forward an alternative plan. If this involved a further extension, it would mean participation in the European parliamentary elections. As I've said previously, I believe strongly that it would be wrong to ask people in the UK to participate in these elections three years after voting to leave the EU. What the decision today underlines is the importance of the House of Commons passing a Brexit deal next week so that we can bring an end to the uncertainty and leave in a smooth and orderly manner. Tomorrow morning I will be returning to the UK and working hard to build support for getting the deal through. I know MPs on all sides of the debate have passionate views and I respect those different positions. Last night I expressed my frustration and I know that MPs are frustrated too. They have difficult jobs to do. I hope we can all agree we are now at the moment of decision and I will make every effort to ensure that we are able to leave with a deal and move our country forward. Thank you. Uh, Laura. Um, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, BBC News. Um, doesn't this delay just postpone the dilemma you still find yourself in? What is it that makes you think you have a chance of passing your vote next week? And can you confirm you will definitely hold the third meaningful vote next week? And I know you've expressed what appears to be some regret from how the remarks you made last night about MPs. Do you think actually you should apologise for the remarks you made about what Parliament has done? Well, first of all, uh, as I said, in relation to members of Parliament, there are passionately held views on all sides of this argument. And yes, as I said last night, I expressed frustration, but I know MPs are frustrated too. And I'm very grateful to those MPs who have supported the deal, to those who've come round to supporting the deal, having not previously done so. And to all those MPs that I've been meeting across the House and talking to about the issues that uh, they are concerned about in relation to this deal. But I think what this decision tonight does is show the clear choice that is available, uh, uh, open to MPs. Getting the deal through next week in a meaningful vote means that we can have that extension to the 22nd of May, get our legislation through, deliver on the referendum, leave the European Union and do it in an orderly manner. Uh, not getting that vote through means that we will obviously, as uh, the Council has said, come back to the Council before the 12th of April with a plan for the way, uh, for the way forward. Uh, but that, that, if it involves that further extension, would mean us uh, uh, candidates being stood in the European parliamentary elections. I think the choice is clear for people. James. Prime Minister, uh, <coughs> Donald Tusk listed four options now before April the 12th. Deal, no deal, extend or revoke. We know that your first choice is deal, but to help us understand your thinking, could you now rank in order of preference those other three choices? Is no deal your second choice? I am working to ensure that we can leave the European Union with a deal. Uh, you mentioned a fourth choice of revoking Article 50. I do not believe that we should be revoking Article 50. That is not something we should be doing for this reason. 
We gave the choice as to whether to stay in the European Union or leave the European Union to the British people. They voted in 2016. They voted to leave. Uh, government at the time said we would honour and respect the decision. At the last general election, 80% of the votes were cast for members of parliament who stood on a manifesto to honour that decision, respect the referendum. I think the time is now to deliver for the British people. The time is now to make the decision. Uh, Faisal. Uh, thanks, Prime Minister Sky News. Um, can you confirm what will happen if your deal, I know you want it to pass, but just say it doesn't. If the deal I'm glad does, you got the message. It does, <laughs> if the deal doesn't uh, pass next week, that you will bring forward the SI that would change the date to the 12th of April, and will you therefore also hold the promised uh, sequence of indicative votes so a different plan from the House of Commons will come about or be revealed? Well, I stand by the commitments that we've made, both in terms of the legislative commitment for a motion for the House of Commons and obviously the commitments that the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster has made in the, uh, in the House of Commons. Uh, the decision that's been taken by the European Union Council and uh, obviously to which we have agreed uh, does mean that there is now that different date of the, uh, of the 12th of April. Uh, I believe this is important. It gives us the opportunity, MPs next week, to look at the choices that clearly face them. We can leave with a deal in an orderly manner, have that extension to the 22nd of May, or if we don't uh, uh, get that deal through, if we don't get that vote through, then before the 12th of April we have to come forward with another plan. Uh, and if that plan means a further extension, it means standing in those European parliamentary elections. Okay. Tom. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, you said to the House of Commons on Wednesday uh, that if your deal is not passed, and I quote, the House will have to decide how to proceed. Can you confirm if the House does decide to proceed with a long delay or a softer Brexit or a customs union, you will then enact that? I was very clear that we need to work with the House to decide how to proceed if we, uh, if we don't get the deal through this week. But I think what tonight's decision from the Council has done is very clean, clearly frame for people the choices that will be available to them. I continue to believe that the best route for the United Kingdom is to honour the referendum result, to leave the European Union, to do it in an orderly manner. That means to do it with a deal. The deal is there. The option is there for members of parliament. I believe it's important that we do see that vote going through and that we are able to leave in that orderly, orderly way. Jason. Thank you. Jason Groves from the Daily Mail. Are we ever going to leave the EU, Prime Minister? We, we've, got, we've got a whole load of new dates here. Yesterday you seemed to be suggesting you wouldn't ever sanction a longer delay. Now you're talking about it again. Will you ever sanction a longer delay? Or is that, is that a red line for you? Is, is this it? Are these the last dates we're ever going to see about Brexit? The, the, the answer to your first question, Jason, is yes, we will be leaving the European Union. And I absolutely fervently believe that it is the duty of Parliament uh, to deliver on that result of the referendum. I also believe that it is better for the UK if we can do that with a negotiated deal, do that in an orderly, uh, smooth and orderly manner. Uh, that's what tonight's decision from the Council enables us to do. But I think it is important that we recognise, and I hope all MPs would agree with me, that we are now at that moment of decision. Now, I'll take a couple of more. Is Andy here from PA? Yes. Um, Andy Woodcock from PA. Um, the Press Association. Um, Prime Minister, there's a petition on the parliamentary website that has now gained more than two million um, signatures asking you to revoke Article 50. Are you confident that it's, it is still the will of the British people to leave the European Union, or do you think there's any chance that opinion has shifted since 2016? Well, if you look back to what happened in the referendum, we saw the biggest democratic exercise in our history. We saw many people who'd either never voted for before or not voted for many years, turning out to vote in that referendum. And there was a clear result that we should leave the European Union. And I think that it's important if we want to show that we can be trusted as politicians to respect a decision that we gave to the people. We didn't say, um, tell us what you think and we'll think about it. We said, here's the vote. What is your decision? And we will deliver on it. And I believe it is our duty as, uh, as a government, as a parliament, to deliver on that vote. And now the final question I'll take, is the uh, 
Somebody here from Deutsche Welle. Yes, sorry, yes. Well, uh, German broadcaster. Prime Minister, you put some of the blame uh, about the situation that the UK is in uh, on the House of Commons yesterday. Do you put some of the blame on yourself as well? And would you do things differently, especially dealing with the EU, given the fact that uh, today, again, you did not get what you wanted because you wanted an extension until the 30th of June, and uh, that's not what you got? Well, throughout these negotiations, of course, they've been tough. Both sides have had their interests. They've been promoting their interests. I believe and, and any negotiation involves a degree of compromise. I believe that we have got a good deal on the table. That's why I continue to uh, promote, that, uh, promote that deal. Uh, and also, if we look at what has happened tonight, there was always um, a tension in terms of the dates between the, the various legal risks around the European parliamentary elections. And I recognise uh, that, that, uh, that that was there. But I believe what we now have in terms of the Council's decision is a very clear framework within which uh, MPs can operate. They know what the choices are. I believe now is the moment of decision. If we get a vote through this week, we can leave on the 22nd of May with uh, that uh, uh, deal, with that deal ratified. If we don't get a vote through the next week, we will have to propose a, new, a different way forward to the European Union. And if that involves an extension, uh, then they, they would uh, uh, say that we should hold those European parliamentary elections. I don't believe it's right to be in a situation of holding European parliamentary elections. Three years on from people having voted to leave the EU, I think they would rightly question why it was that they were then being asked to elect people to an organisation, part of an organisation that they had already voted, voted to leave. Thank you.